Hello there. Good afternoon, good evening, uh, good night for those connecting from very outside of Europe. And uh, today we have a new webinar by I Welcome. Uh, it's called The Road to the Sea is Fueled by B2B. And as you can imagine, we're going to talk about B2B capabilities within the I Welcome CM platform. So again, uh, it's going to be around uh, 20 minutes uh, and we're going to accommodate the questions. So without any further ado, we get into the agenda and the questions for today are, as usual, three questions. It's always a three questions webinar, at least when you hear it from me. So first question is, what is the welcome role in, in what we call the road to the sea? And two is, what are the B2B core needs in the consumer IM or CM space? And three is, how can I welcome help in B2B scenarios? So let's talk about the road to the sea. And I think it's, better to move and scroll uh, the entire animation. So what we call the road to the sea is just a very simple way to describe all the different personas that are between the consumers, uh, being consumers or customers, being business customers or retail um, consumers. Um, so these um, consumers, customers are typically in the range of millions and they, are very, they have a very high fluctuation. So they are very hard to predict in terms of uh, numerosity. Then we have in between the uh, um, company itself and the customers or consumers, we have the business partners. These as well are, I call it consumerized, so they are less than millions, they are thousands or tens of thousands, and they have a more of a fluctuation. Uh, they are easy to predict, but still they can fluctuate. And then you have the workforce IM, which is the traditional space for identity governance administration suites. And here we were talking about the thousands or again, tens of thousands. And basically there is no fluctuation or any fluctuation, it's very easily predictable. So this is the road to the sea. And today we're gonna to specifically talk about this man, man wearing the tie, uh, two are black and one is orange shaking their hands. It's uh, how can, we really serve these intermediate entity and this consumer and b2b it's really the, the the sweet spot for i welcome all in all i would say today cloud-based consumer i am is serving all these highly fluctuation type of users uh, that we just described so talking about the problem the problem it's very simple and many of you online have already seen it in the past in the old days of employees identity management uh, so if we look at today what consumers customers or business partners dealers agents uh, distributors are facing it they are facing a fragmented online experience so for the same person same users they have different portals Every portal had ever different identity silos. Every identity silos uh, has a log, a separate log system. So, of course, there is no SSO, but most importantly, there is no um, smooth user experience uh, for these two type of stakeholders. It's um, it's of utmost importance for consumers, but it's becoming more and more important also for B2B intermediaries, because these guys could, could get sick of working with a given company simply because their online services are terrible. But the, 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 the online experience is just one component. Uh, it's also a nice, uh, nice is quoted, security and GDPR compliance mess. Because if you think about these applications and specifically think about the applications in the uh, B2B space, uh, um, they have to accommodate the need for consent and preference management and oftentimes they are hardwired into the application but most importantly they, there is a complete lack of a centralized consent ledger where uh, consumers but today we talk about b2b intermediaries can really have their preferences and consent stored so that can be uh, i mean uh, at one place uh, for a source of truth about this information now, if we talk briefly about what we do, uh, and that's one slide without animation, on one side, we have uh, we offer what we call a secure and frictionless experience, uh, and that's for consumers as well as business-to-business -business entities. And in the middle, uh, we have this uh, cloud master record that we offer for, uh, for 
consumer, consumer with the asterisk, C asterisk, identities and consent. And on the same one, we can allow the C asterisk to manage their consent and rights. And on the back end, we propagate the trusted information we collect uh, to uh, internal applications, can be attributes about um, identities, can be consent information, or we can allow this application to inquiry uh, us via skim uh, into our um, central service. And of course, we can slice and dice all the data we have and the behaviors for basically three personas, the chief digital officer, so the marketing digital part of the company, uh, CIO IT operation, and of course, our beloved uh, data privacy officers or CISO taking care of who is accessing on the relevant and personal information. Now let's move to the second question. That's uh, just the intro. And what are the B2B core needs in the consumer IM space? And that's the part that probably you have never seen in any presentation because it's been made quite fresh for this webinar. So all in all, um, there is always an ecosystem. So if we take a look at what we call the bank assurance B2B ecosystem, we have the bank or can be the insurance company at the bottom. And we have two types of customers the retail customers and the business customers. The business customers are company themselves with employees um, accessing the uh, services offered by, for example, the insurance company. So that's quite often for health uh, insurance uh, provided uh, from an insurance to a business entity and then propagated to their employees. So who's in between? In between, typically, there is a combination of agents, there is a combination of dealers. Dealers are emerging in the uh, financial and insurance space also as a result of open banking where traditional reselling channels are a bit uh, extended and modified. And, uh, and in general, brokers in the insurance space, brokers and agents, as you probably know, are two different type of entities. Agents are typically selling just one insurance product and the brokers are multi-products, so selling stuff from multiple insurances. So that's what we call the bank assurance B2B ecosystem. If we move into another set of vertical, uh, which I call the manufacturing utility B2B ecosystem, you still have the retail and business customers at the top. Uh, in between the uh, B2B intermediaries are uh, slightly different. You still have agents. Uh, we start to have distributors wholesale. This is applicable for manufacturing companies. They need uh, warehouses, uh, but also in the energy space where uh, wholesale is becoming more and more of a distribution channel. Then you have dealers, which are very close to the customers. And of course, if you're selling a product or you're selling a service like an energy company where you need to fix the pipe or the electric wire, you always need a field service. So the next question is, all these B2B intermediary entities, what do they have in common when it comes to consumer IM issues? So first and foremost, all these uh, intermediaries are companies themselves, and they all have employees and contractors. Uh, that, uh, first of all, they come and go. So it's almost impossible to keep track of all the single employees joining the, for example, the specific dealer. So um, they, by definition, require delegated and self service access to business application. So you must push the delegation to someone inside the dealer who has the authority to approve or revoke access rights to the coming and going um, employees or contractors. And of course, it's, it's uh, very important to quickly terminate them when they leave. And only the dealer or the broker or the field service company have the knowledge uh, to uh, put that into action. The second thing is all of these employees and contractors could commit fraud. So a very common behavior we see in the market is that um, as the, say, the large insurance company has no ability to go granular and provide access to individual uh, employee of a given agent or broken company, they all use the same user ID and password. Now that's impossible to sustain for a very simple reason. Um, if there is a fraud, uh, you must be able to track down who did it. So in order to avoid the risk of fraud, you need to remove share password. And in order to achieve that, you need to offer an easy self-aborting that really allow everybody within that given, for example, dealer, 
to have their own individual user ID and password, and then being uh, authorized to the application that they can use. And if needed, enforce asset controls with multi-factor authentication, specifically when they access or do things on sensitive environments. And last but not least, that's very important, all these employees and contractors are belonging or hired by an external entity. And as a result of that, they are not uh, uh, employees of the, say, the insurance company, which is providing the services. So they have all the possible GDPR rights on consent, opt-in, opt-out, be erased, also called be forgotten. Um, of course, assuming that they are European citizens, but as you know, uh, GDPR likes regulations are coming and, and propagating quite quickly throughout uh, North America and the rest of the world. So if we boil it down to the three key core capabilities, we talk about delegation. That's, I would say, well, 60% of the, of the need when you um, deal with B2B counterparts. Of course, you need self-service abilities and multi-factor authentication. And yes, you do need consent and GDPR management because these employees could leave that dealer and then starting to um, claim their GDPR right against you, dear insurance company, simply because you haven't erased their data or given no possibility to do so. Now, again, these are the three common issues. Let's have a look on what we can do uh, in order to address these three very common uh, needs with B2B intermediaries. So the question moves to the th third one, how can I welcome help in B2B scenarios? So first of all, I would like to highlight some of the capability that can support uh, this um, uh, set of requirements. Um, uh, we'll be talking about MFA, we'll be talking about B2B delegated administration, and we'll be talking about consent management. But uh, first and foremost, I think the value proposition of our I Welcome store in the B2B space, it's very simple. We have an identity as a service background, so we originated with the delegation needs and sophisticated access control needs because we had to deal with, with employees. When the company has put its focus on consumer IM as we interpret it today, we have basically reinterpreted what we already had in the software into what I personally call the new consumerized B2B needs. Because these employees of an agent or a broker, they tend to be consumerized. For example, they want to use their social login, they want passwords, at, they want everything they have on Facebook, LinkedIn, and, and whatever. So let's take a look at the first key capability. This, we offer a sophisticated delegation mode. So say that each of these uh, counterparts, but there is one important uh, persona here which is missing that can benefit as well from this capability. It's the business customer, okay? Because they have employee and they need delegation as well. So what we typically do is we allow to name a power user. So the power user is someone who has very powerful rights in order to do a, a set of things. So first of all, they can manually register a new employee. So um, say that this new employee contractor is specifically lazy and it's just sending an email, then it can be registered automatically and um, uh, I mean, without self-registration. But uh, more and more often, especially if we're talking about millennials, these guys would like to be to perform their self-registration with their maybe uh, personal Gmail account. And then once they are self-registered, they want to be approved. This approval process, it's also called elevation because they, you elevate someone who looks like a consumer to be a member, an authorized member of that given dealer or in general business to business intermediary. Uh, uh, once you do it, the power user can then assign different applications uh, depending on the type of role. And last but not least, uh, the power user can delegate sub power users. So a specifically large organization, you can have uh, one super user at the top and many power users, for example, at a different country level, or could be at the um, sales channel type of uh, level could be wholesale 
uh, or um, other type of distribution resale channel. And this power user can then basically do uh, the same type of things, obviously restricted in a smaller domain. Again, this is key and this stuff, of course, it's available in the software. Um, as you can see, there's quite a rich UI for performing these kind of activities. And to be honest with you, this interface doesn't differ from being a power user or from being uh, the god of the iWelcome CM platform. It's just a matter of being restricted within your delegation boundaries. And um, so you can see uh, it's all about the identity registration and then assignment to the different applications that I've been onboarded, for example, for that specific set of dealers. Now, let's move to the second capability, which is quite important for B2B. And, it, and that's um, MFA, also known as multi-factor authentication. Maybe you don't know, but uh, we do provide, uh, as I welcome, a multi-factor uh, uh, authentication platform that um, provides all the, um, I would say, classic uh, second factor authentication mechanism. Uh, could be OTP, SMS, email, but most importantly, we also provide the ability um, for push um, uh, approvals. So you install the given app into in your iPhone or Android, and uh, you have to authorize uh, within your uh, mobile telephone. The important part is that uh, we can allow customization of this app for your given brand. So if you're a large insurance company or you're a large energy company, you would like to have your dealers, brokers, agents using your app and not a generic one. And that's one of the capabilities we offer with this MFA feature. Um, last but not least, uh, it's uh, the GDPR and concert management. For those of you familiar with what we do, this chart is not you. But let me remind again that uh, we do have a quite of a, a extensive set of capabilities here um, that are covering consent management and some processes around the, the GDPR requirements. When we talk about consent management, we provide consent management on two types of objects. One are the documents, could be the pri privacy policy or the terms of service or anything that you might deem appropriate for that given persona the dealer, they might have a different contract or different uh, agreement to, um, to opt in. And the other part, it's the consent on the attributes. So that dealer for each employee has a, a set of personal information. And for some of them, you might want to uh, collect a bit of consent because you might use these data for marketing purpose with these given uh, human beings. Um, we have built all these set of capability. The screenshot on the left is just the tip of the iceberg out of our reference implementation. It's built on a very sophisticated metadata model where for every attribute of the identity record, we can set a number of attributes or meta attributes. So the one you can see here are the GDPR specific one but there is no limit on using this uh, metadata model for adding other information that, for example, might be beneficial for your B2B uh, requirements. So all in all, again, to summarize what I just said, document and attribute consent management capability, it's built on a metadata model that accommodates pre-configured pre GDPR controls, but it's not limited to that. And of course, um, you, well, there is a set of APIs which you can use for inquiring into this consent ledger from external applications. Now we're moving towards the end, and uh, I promise you around 20 minutes. I think we are in the, we're going to be ending in the range of 22, 23 uh, before questions. So why I welcome, and I should say why I welcome being a credible player in B2B scenarios. Um, well, first of all, I want to um, take this chart out. The, so this is a combination of two analyst opinion. So on the left, you see um, the Kupinger and Cole CM Compass, which has been released in December last year, so three months ago. And according to Kupinger, uh, I welcome is a, a product leader player in that space, along with many other gentlemen listed here, like Genray, Nawakamai, Ping, Salesforce, O0, Forge Rock, and SAP with Gigia. 
But then there is another uh, segment which has been analyzed by a different uh, analyst called Garner. It's an emerging one. You're going to hear about them soon. I'm joking. Um, they released the market guide for consent and preference management. And the interesting thing there is that all the vendors in that uh, categorization, but I welcome an SAP, they don't play any role into the uh, CM space. So it looks that today, if you take these two um, surveys of the market, uh, I welcome, also SAP, it's uh, in a nice position combining what the market defines as CM, um, but offering capability in a different market, at least from an analyst perspective, which is consent and preference management. And that's basically supporting the why I welcome and all this messaging in a way have been blended for today presentations as well. I just want to provide you some additional names and a bit of a market perspective. And last but not least, uh, you always need to have clients using uh, uh, your platform, in our case, our cloud uh, platform for B2B, but also B2E cases. Uh, keep in mind that uh, we come from a business to employee standpoint. So there are customers like um, PostNL or Energy using us for B2E uh, reasons. Uh, but you know, other clients like WMF in Germany or South Water in the UK using our platform just for B2B use cases, not involving consumers, at least for now. There is another large client, which we can't name, uh, but there is a bit of a symbol. It's a, I would say, an institutional financial um, organization. They are using us as well for supporting their um, consumer IM uh, for B2B uh, requirements. So if you take uh, this last chart, as you can see, what we're painting today, it's not a future. It's something that we do it already. But I think we'd, we believe that the B2B story deserves more visibility because oftentimes, as I can see, having joined the company eight months ago, there is a strong misunderstanding that consumer IM is just for consumers. No, at least in our case, we can serve, as we said, the road to C. B2B intermediaries, consumers, customers, being retail or enterprise customers. Um, I think we made it in 24 minutes. I think it's time now to go to the Q&A session, assuming that I'm uh, able to open again the, uh, the question side. So I know it's hard to uh, perform the initial ice breaking, uh, but you can post your questions on the chat box, uh, which is available on your GoToWebinar uh, panel. And uh, as of now, unless I have to scroll it, uh, I think you're quite shy, or I'm probably being extremely clear, which is quite unlikely. So while we um, we wait for maybe for um, one or two questions here, um, uh, there is a bunch of stuff behind the scenes uh, for uh, what we offer in the B2B space. And um, of course, today, for the sake of clarity and brevity, uh, we selected three uh, tips of the iceberg. And so what you could basically, these three macro features are also including a number of other things. Uh, uh that could range from blacklist whitelist validation especially when you register companies that want to become your dealer or agent you might want to perform a bit of a risk assessment before um even starting talking with them and you know today uh, depending on the country you are um you could have different uh, different type of scenarios okay uh so Okay, there is a question um, tab, but uh, I don't see any questions here. Okay, uh, there is a question about can you adjust roles? I don't exactly know what you mean by adjust. So we have a role uh, modeling in place. As you can imagine, it's not as complex as you are used to in the business to employee standpoint. So the, 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 the levels and the sophistication of that is not, um, it's suited for a different type of persona. So in a way I call it simplified, but yes, 
we can accommodate roles as well as we typically manage the um you use attributes for performing actions on which application should be delivered to be to which uh, dealer or which employee uh, uh, part of that given dealer okay yeah okay assign yeah we can assign a role as i said uh, we, we basically assign a role or based on attributes and we use that for um for um, assigning the applications that are considered part of that uh, uh, assignable domain. So there are, we have time now to develop a solution which tackle the problem you so nicely outlined. So uh, all the stuff that you've seen today, it's uh, available. What we're doing, um, uh, there is only one part uh, that we are sophisticating way more and it's the delegation. So delegation is there today what we are doing today it's improving the way you can um, uh, uh, configure it not from a dealer standpoint but when you want really define the domains today it's um, it's still a bit tricky so we are simplifying that part but the mfa component or the mfa capability and the gdpr consent management are there so what you see today it's uh, sellable presentable installable well there's nothing to install but usable um as of day one meaning today or maybe tomorrow as we are already towards the end of the day here in europe and thank you for the question i can see that coming but probably it was the last one all right so um unless there is something more coming up now i really thank you for your participation I hope you liked it. Uh, uh, this webinar has been recorded, hopefully without my doc at the bottom. Um, so you should be able to see it again uh, in uh, on YouTube or whenever we post it online. Or at least I will post it again as soon as it becomes available after a bit of editing. So having said that, I want to thank you again and stay tuned. We are in a webinar frenzy mode. So I think more are coming in the next uh, week. We're gonna skip Easter, uh, but other than that, uh, we like to keep the roles running at least a webinar every two, three weeks. Thank you for now, for now and enjoy your evening, morning or night, wherever you are. Thank you very much.